So I'm here with Dr. McCoy and I'm driving to get my COVID-19 vaccine. I'm getting the Pfizer version. So today is going to be an exercise in overcoming my discomfort of needles. I wouldn't say it's a phobia. It's not even really a fear. It's more of just a perfectly sane and rational Ugh. But there are more important things afoot, so I'm overcoming that. I am going to get the Pfizer vaccine. So while I'm driving up to the place where I'm going to get the vaccine, I'm gonna talk a little bit about how these vaccines work because they exploit something that's fairly fundamental in molecular biology. In fact, it's called the central dogma of molecular biology, so-called because the scientist who named it didn't really understand what the word dogma meant. But the way it works, the way that our cells know how to make us, is that we have DNA, which is a sequence of nucleotides, and that's stored in the cell's nucleus, that DNA is transcribed into RNA, which is also a nucleotide sequence, similar to DNA, but slightly different. And specifically, it's a form of RNA called messenger RNA or mRNA. That mRNA goes down to the ribosomes where it's going to be translated into proteins. And the way that that works is each three nucleotides or letters in the mRNA sequence is what's called a codon, and it stands for a particular amino acid. Amino acids are the building blocks of proteins. So what the ribosomes do is they read the mRNA three letters at a time, and for each of those codons, they assemble the appropriate amino acid into the chain that's going to make the protein. What this vaccine does is it introduces mRNA from the virus. It's not like other vaccines that actually introduce a deactivated version of the virus. Instead, it introduces only the mRNA that codes for a particular spike protein that's unique to this coronavirus. Our cells then use that mRNA and it's translated into this particular spike protein. Our immune system then recognizes that protein as foreign and it builds up an immune response so we're able to develop the antibodies without actually coming into contact with the virus itself, but only coming into contact with this particular mRNA sequence that makes this particular spike protein. There's a lot of technical information about how these work, but that's sort of a general overview. I'll link you to something down in the what's it that'll give you some more technical information and better explanations than I was able to provide. But I just wanted to give you some idea of what we're actually talking about when we talk about these vaccines. So I guess I should comment on the idea that even though this is a horror channel, the vaccine is not really a horror subject. I'm talking about it anyway, in part because it's important, but also because this last year has been such a year of horrors that I think even we as horror people need to talk about the various steps that we can take to try to end this particular horror. This is the wrong kind of horror that we've been dealing with. So that's why even though this is a horror channel, I'm not talking about Freddy Krueger or ghosts or zombies or any of the kinds of things that I usually like to talk about. Instead, I'm here talking about driving off to go get my vaccine. And another thing that's worth thinking about, because there's been a lot of fear and uncertainty with regard to these new mRNA vaccines, there are people who think that it actually alters your genetic code. It does not do that. As I mentioned, it just introduces this mRNA that completely skips the DNA. It doesn't even have to get into the nucleus where the DNA is, because the mRNA is what comes out of the nucleus and goes off to the ribosomes. And once the cells are done with mRNA, there are enzymatic reactions that just degrade the mRNA so it doesn't sit there cluttering up your cells like so much waste. It just goes out with the rest of the waste. But I should also point out that my little explanation applies to the mRNA vaccines. That's the Pfizer vaccine, which I'm getting, and the Moderna vaccine. The Johnson & Johnson vaccine uses a more traditional vaccine sort of mechanism. I'm actually really glad I got this appointment today because there's a storm blowing in and I didn't particularly want to try to find this new location that I haven't been to before in a blizzard. The weather today is a little bit overcast but actually quite pleasant. Traffic's not too bad so that's nice. And 
I suppose if all of those irrational fears do turn out to be founded and people do start to turn into zombies, hey, I'm a horror fan. Zombies are pretty cool. Turn right onto East Wesley Avenue, then turn right. Oh, I love this skeleton. <laughs> Thank you. Straight ahead? Yes, sir. Are you here for your vaccine? Yes. All right, looks like I've arrived. Time to mask up, and uh, I'm gonna try to catch footage on the inside, so hopefully I'll see you there. All right, I'm here, and I'm headed off to actually get the vaccine. I want to apologize in advance for the sound quality, but between the masks and the wind and the onboard mic on my camera, I'm just not sure how good of a quality I'm gonna get. We're gonna do the best we can, and I am gonna head off and, and get this thing done. I have to say, everything was fairly efficient. After being checked in, I was directed to a waiting room where I only had to wait for a few minutes until they were ready for me. How's it going today? Good. Um, did you receive a vaccination record card yet? Not yet. Okay, I will take this one for you, check it out, and give you a vaccination record card. So. After verifying that all of my papers were in order, which they were, they directed me to a place where I could line up to actually get the vaccine. Okay. Incidentally, this was all done at a university campus, and though this was not my alma mater, it was kind of nice to be on a college campus again. This was in a school of engineering, and it was nice to be surrounded by all the artifacts that make up college life. Hello. I'll take your form from you. Okay. You keep that? Maybe. There, <laughs> there we go. What arm do you want to do it in? Left is fine. Okay. Uh. What's that for? Do you have a blog or something? Yeah. That's awesome. YouTube channel. Okay. Nice. What do you, what's your main content? Horror. Horror? Yeah. Oh god, I'm about to be yeah. in some horror thing. <laughs> Are you ready? Yeah. So what kind of stuff do you do? Let's talk about horror books, horror movies mostly. Okay. Make some props. Perfect. And, you're not you know, bleeding, so this. you're good. <laughs> well, there's that for you. That's what time okay. you can leave. Just head over to our holding area over there and they'll help you out from there, okay? Which way? Just follow the exit signs that way, okay? okay? After getting the vaccine, we were directed to a holding area where we were asked to wait for 15 minutes just in case anyone had an allergic reaction, which I did not, and nor did anyone else who was there while I was. I did, however, take the opportunity to hold court and discuss all of the various horror things that I like to talk about, ranging from Freddy Krueger to zombies and everything in between. Well, that does it fairly quick, fairly efficient, relatively painless, but do y'all remember that scene in I, Zombie? I'm not going to spoil it if you haven't seen it, but if you have seen it, you know the one I'm talking about. That's all I was able to think about the whole time. Anyway, I'm back to my car, so I am going to sign off. Well, it's now a couple hours later and I'm just resting. I do want to give you a few updates over the first couple of days after receiving the first dose of the Pfizer vaccine. So far, a few hours have passed and I feel fine. I do have a little bit of soreness in my arm. That's to be expected. It's nothing too bad. Still, I'm just taking the excuse to rest a little bit. I will check back in tomorrow and let you know how things are progressing at that time. Well, this is our blizzard. There was supposed to be a nasty storm to blow in last night. So much so that people were hoarding canned goods almost like they did a year ago. 
And well, this is what it seems to have all come down to. Not very exciting as blizzards go, just slightly gray and slightly damp. That's disappointing. Well, I guess I spoke too soon. Still doesn't seem much like the blizzard I was promised, though. There it is. That's what I was waiting for. About 12 hours too late, but better late than never, I always say. Well, I'm now just about 24 hours in after my first dose of the Pfizer vaccine, and still no major side effects. My arm is still fairly sore. That's to be expected. It's maybe a little bit worse than when I get my flu shot, but nothing unmanageable. But between the vaccine and because they were predicting a storm to blow in, I did clear my schedule, so I am just resting, which is kind of nice. And even though I haven't experienced any major side effects yet, let's take a second to look at this list of side effects that I printed out and see what kinds of side effects I might be experiencing in the first one to three days after getting the vaccine. Let's see. Fever, chills, fatigue. None of those yet. Pain at the injection site, yes, a little bit. Headache, no more so than usual. Uh, vomiting, diarrhea, dizziness, lightheadedness, nausea, none of those yet. Feeling of impending doom. After this last year, how would I even tell the difference? Happy Pi Day, everyone! Yes, it is now Pi Day, and this is what I woke up to this morning. Not sure how well you can see that, but we are getting some lovely horror sort of weather today for Pi Day. The downside of that is, unfortunately, I'm not able to go out and get pie. I'm not even sure I'm going to be able to order a pizza pie because I don't know if the pizza guy can get here. But I was prepared. I do have a pie downstairs. Well, it is indeed pie day. I've got my pie shirt, I've got my pie, I've got my pie wine, and I even have a copy of Darren Aronofsky's movie, Pie. I am ready to celebrate properly. Originally, I had planned to do a big horror math crossover to celebrate pie day, but circumstances prevented it, so I'm doing my quiet little low-key celebration but next year, if the gods are smiling on us, I will do a big math horror crossover, so make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss it. It occurs to me that it's been almost exactly a year since this whole pandemic started. I remember last year, I went out to Village Inn for my Pi Day Pie, and I think it was the next day or just a couple of days later that the governor ordered everything shut down. So, it's been a weird year. But now I do have the first dose of my vaccine, so let's get back to the actual subject of our video. It's now been about two days since I got my vaccine. The soreness in my arm is still there a little bit, but it's mostly gone. I've had no other side effects. And to answer our big question of does the COVID-19 vaccine turn one into a zombie, I have to say, I don't know how long it takes the zombie virus to work, but couple of days later, I'm still doing fine. I have not turned into a zombie yet, so I'm going to step out on a limb and say no, it does not. And for now, that's all I've got to say. If I do experience some severe side effects in the coming days, I will come back on here and let y'all know. But for now, I'm going to say that it's a harmless vaccine that does a lot of good and that you should get it as soon as you're able to. I will come back on and talk about it again after I get my second dose in three weeks. In the meantime, I have some Pi Day celebration to do, so I'm going to sign off. And I will say, until next time, take care and stay scared.